Hello and welcome back everybody to Solutions Pod where we invite you to join us on a journey of stubborn optimism, tackling some of the most significant challenges facing our communities, health, environment, and uh, many other factors. So we're connecting you with uh, some visionary minds to lead us uh, through some of these challenges in a spirit of courage and innovation. So today uh, to help guide us is Gary Hensel of GaryHensel.com. Um, he's written many books, and I just had the pleasure of reading one of them that we're going to talk a little bit more about today. So, Gary, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so um, one, of, one of your main focuses as an author that, that I've noticed is, is inspiring people through difficult times to embrace their true potential. So before we get started uh, or too deep into this, tell us a little bit about how you got into this journey and and maybe some of the, the struggles that you overcame to get there. Uh, first, I, I love their stubborn optimism. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good book title. Yeah. Uh, and it fits a lot of what my mission I'm trying to do. You know, I just, I've spent, uh, you know, kind of 60 years growing spiritually. It's been a constant. And I look at uh, all of our setbacks and heartaches and illnesses as life lessons that uh, are important and that we, we should grow from them. And, um, and I've overcome some major stuff in my life, in, in my childhood and then with illness and, and things like that. Last 10 years, um, I, was, I was a college professor and department chair for 20 years and I taught and I retired to write. And uh, I've written five books now and I've got over 150,000 followers and readers in like 200 countries. So it's very rewarding. Every day I get just tons of messages of people saying thank you and asking questions and from all over the world, which is fascinating. You know, how we can use technology and some of the social media platforms. There's a lot of positive and optimism in in as well. Yeah, and actually, uh, we, we have a, uh, a question from the UK that was written in. I announced to, to some of my friends that... Uh, okay. the interview I have a lot. The, the question is, um, well, I'll just kind of read it verbatim. So, I'm a graduate from, uh, or with a, a Master's of Psychology uh, in London, and I, I recently read uh, Troll Warrior, um, which is a book that uh, interested me in particular. It's dedicated to people in pain, depression, and those who have even lost all hope. You mentioned in the book that the only real obstacle is you. Uh, what are some of the most common ways that people become their own obstacle, and how can we turn our biggest weaknesses into our biggest assets? That is a, an outstanding question. And I have a lot of friends and colleagues in the UK. I, I've, I've spoke there about earlier books and things like that. So I don't know if this is somebody I know, but uh, it's a pleasure uh, connecting with them and, and all the friends there. The biggest way that we do it is we don't think we're worthy. And that's one of my biggest messages. It's one of the most important life lesson that I have learned and still learning to love yourself. And I know that sounds kind of corny and, and um, some people uh, that don't really have any spiritual depth see it as being somehow, you know, narcissistic or, or selfish. But the truth is we need to love ourselves, accept ourselves, understand that we're worthy before we can get in a healthy relationship. Um, before we can inspire and help others, before we can have our passion in our careers and, and those types of things. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of education, um, but they, they haven't done much inner work. And uh, even though they're successful, they make a lot of money, they lead large groups of people, they're still kind of emotionally crippled. And that really affects the way they communicate with uh for instance, like employees or family members tend to not be in really healthy relationships. So a big message for me is the concept that uh, uh, I am worthy. I am, I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy, I'm worthy of abundance. I'm worthy of good health. So until we get past that first foundation piece, uh, not much else can happen. So that's the first thing that when I talk to people is, is to work on that. Yeah, that, that's uh, definitely 
something that I guess if we don't put the oxygen on ourselves, you know, in the, in the case of the, the burning plane, then we won't be able to really help other people. It's really important to, to recognize the need to, to put the oxygen, so to speak, on ourselves before trying to help. I like that term. In yeah. the burning plane, yeah. So, by the way, stutter, stubborn optimism, you, you can feel free to use that for your next next. <laughs> I love that. I think that's, yeah. a, that's kind of my motto. <laughs> because, you know, so many people are so negative. Um, and, you know, the world that, the, if you believe that the world is a horrible place and people are terrible, that's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to experience every day. But if you believe the world is beautiful and, and people are, are generally good, that's what you're going to experience. You know, and so it's easy to be pessimistic. Um, and, uh, and there's not much intelligence in it. If you really look at the big picture, if you study history, if uh, you look at our growth as, as humankind, it's been, it's been very positive. It's been, it's been uh, a continually a growth. And if you don't believe that, you really haven't studied any history of what people lived through in just a few generations ago and, and things like that. So, and it's also, pessimism can be very addictive, you know, uh, just like anger. They, well, people get addicted to being angry. They get addicted to being pessimistic. And so that's how they approach every situation, every communication, every relationship. And most of that is based on fear. So like the earlier question, uh, the importance of needing to love yourself and feel that you are worthy. Uh, many people make decisions out of fear. And so, I, you know, a big part of my teaching, too, is, is two of the most powerful forces are love and fear. And, um, and so, if you, if you have a lot of fear in your life, um, then you're going to make bad decisions. You're going to get in bad relationships. You're going to do things for the wrong reason choose careers for the wrong reason, um, all that type of stuff. So we have to release that. And with this epidemic, it's been very eye-opening for even people in my close circle that I thought were, you know, like the real go-getters and positive. And I see them full of so much fear, you know, and, and then you kind of step back and you go, man, it kind of makes sense because they're like a controlling person. You know, they have to, they're going 100 miles an hour and they're really successful and they're helping a lot of people, but they have to control everything. And, and what that is, that comes out of fear. I'm afraid I need to control. And of course, the biggest fear that we have is death. And so obviously the virus has brought that out. Another part of my teaching is that you really can't really start living until you get over the fear of death and accept it and understand that it's going to happen and live your life from there. So if we're constantly running around afraid we're going to die, then we're not going to have a very happy life. Yeah, that's, that's certainly true. Yeah, well, how, how do you suggest we, we get over that? That is a core uh, driver of, of the anxiety um, that, that many people go through. And I think a lot of people don't really acknowledge that or even really think about it in a, in a conscious state. But um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts there? Well, I can get a little woo-woo here. Okay. Um, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about spirituality. Um, some of the new thought that a lot of great writers and thinkers have, you know, they talk about that we kind of, we choose the life. We, we choose the people that we are going to be surrounded with, even the, the angry, the toxic people, because it's all about, in this lifetime, learning lessons and growing. And so I, I do believe that. I've done just tons of reading and research and ex my own life experiences. So I don't, I don't, I believe death is just a, a change of energy. I'm, I'm a very big believer in energy. And, and as it relates to what, what you guys are doing, some outstanding work, um, my contribution in that area was like, I, and when we're talking about health, I believe in being close to nature, being out in it all the time. And uh, I moved to a climate where I could be in nature every day of the year. That was important to me. And uh, the home I chose has a beautiful nature view. I need that. I need to look out the window and, and just see beauty all the time. And I think nature has a real healing power 
I also believe that we ourselves have a, a tremendous healing power and that everything is energy. And I'm a big believer. I do Tai Chi and I do grounding. Are you familiar with, with that concept? Grounding? I'm barefoot right now. If that Okay, so you are, yeah. So being barefoot with the earth as much as you can, because I'm, again, I believe everything is energy, every object, every person. And when we're vibrating at a high energy, we're positive, we're optimistic, we're surrounding ourselves with, with people at the same level. When we're angry, when we're pessimistic, uh, vengeful, we're really vibrating at a low level. And that's what we will attract into our lives. Um, you know, energy attracts energy. And so as far as the death, I believe that death is just a change in the form of that energy. And then you can argue, like, do we have many lives? You know, do we go to heaven? Um, but I don't get too worked up in that stuff. Everybody has their beliefs, and, and I respect that. I just believe that um, energy doesn't disappear. It just changes. We know that. Even in my limited mind, I've studied a lot of, uh, you know, quantum physics and stuff like that. Um, and we know that energy simply changes form. Um, so why wouldn't our bodies or, or our souls be the same way? Yeah, you, you talk a, a little bit in, um, in that book about the, the spirit being um, kind of like traveling around in, in the body and, and uh, you know, kind, kind of like the body is just a vehicle uh, for, for something to plug into. Um, and, you know, the, the more I look around at, uh, at nature and, and I, I study it and, you know, whether you're you're looking through a, a magnifying glass or out at the the cosmos, it's it's it, it's hard to not believe that th there isn't some kind of a greater, deeper mind behind it, and that we're not part of it. And uh, yeah, um, I, I really like what you said about um, ab about the fear and and the fear of death driving us. I think there's there's another motivation for for conflict that I'm seeing happening a lot, and I I, I guess it does relate both to fear and death. But I think there's like also a genuine uh, concern, and and I, a lot of this stuff is is really driven by by social media algorithms that they they'll they'll amplify these really yeah. emotionally triggered states, and yeah. you know, that's what people are are going to respond most to. And so it's not even necessarily the algorithm itself; it's just human nature to always be scanning for these threats and then responding to them. And there's like a need I think a lot of us have to alert the tribe to to something that's going on. Do you have any other, I guess, like strategies to, to help, like, let's say we have to, like, whatever side of the aisle you're on about, you know, for example, um, you know, taking certain drugs or, or not to maybe prevent something. Uh, I don't want to say the word because I know it's going to get banned in the algorithm, right? So, but I think we all know there's like certain things that people want other people to do or not, and they're both afraid that bad things are going to happen. So, how do you suggest having these really important like conversations that really mean a lot to you emotionally without, I guess, turning them into like family conflicts and these really like, like awful, awful things? Well, how, how do you yeah. have more productive conversations? That's a great question. And there is a fine line between we need to stay informed. We need to constantly educate ourselves but also, you know, burying ourselves um, in negativity. We have to be careful. Again, what, it's like you become the people you surround yourself with. Well, it's the same thing, the books you read, the TV you watch. Uh, so um, I like to surround myself with people like you. You know, I, I look for people that are, are doing interesting, fascinating work that's positive, that's optimistic. Uh, so I think there's a fine line between intelligent concern and just fear, you know? So, um, and, and I mean, Martin Luther King, uh, Gandhi, uh, Mother Teresa, many great thinkers have, have talked about like, like don't go to an anti rally, go to a pro rally, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, like uh, uh, you're giving energy, when you're doing an anti thing, you're giving energy to something that you actually don't want, you're actually strengthening it. So, it, again, it's a fine line. It's very difficult. People get addicted to just being angry, like about politics. I'm angry, angry, angry all the time. Well, you're just, you're just pulling in negative energy and surrounding yourself with it, and you're not really accomplishing anything. Uh, you're actually affecting your health. 
You know, you're affecting your relationships. So like even on social media, people come at me with negative stuff, just ridiculous stuff. I just walk on by. I do not get in. Anybody's doing anything negative. I do not engage. And if, and if it gets bad enough, I'll eventually mute them or, or block them or something, you know, but um, so it's out there. It's easy to find. And with families too, families have different beliefs. Again, a very difficult line to walk that there is some benefit to talking about important issues, but just getting into arguments and trying to change people's minds. Um, that's a, that's a big part, like work on yourself, work on what you're doing. You know, I have, I have people that I know that are, you know, really upset about the environment, which I understand it's an important issue, but they're not driving electric cars. They don't have solar panels on their roofs. One people, people I know, they, they don't even have, um, recycling because it costs extra. But yet, every time you see them, they're harping on the environment or they're going to a, a rally, you know, or a protest for it. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, I agree with what you're saying, but you're not living it, you know. Show, show me something that you're doing something different to improve the environment. So it's always looking outward instead of looking inward. A wilderness therapy instructor, and, and one of the things that our, our goal was as instructors was to, to get people out of the emotionally reactive phase because that's really like, it's a more of a uh, hind brain, like almost like an animal-like processing when we're, yep. when we're constantly in that fear state or that yeah. reactive state, whether it's, you know, I mean, sometimes uh, it doesn't always, you know, fight, fight or flight, like that's, a, it's, it's like w- way oversimplified. Humans have many different core reactions, but anytime we're in that reactive state, you're like, it would be nice to have, have more environmental activists that are like sitting down and like, okay, let's, let's figure it out. And I know that that's happening, but it, it is kind of, it's, it's a little disappointing to see people screaming and, and angry and it's like, okay, yeah. but now what? <laughs> like, like you, get, ha- you, you get to where you like, you have to, everybody has to think exactly like you. And that's, again, that's just, when we create a us versus them, we're moving away from source. That, that's, that becomes the ego. And the ego loves ammunition. You know, uh, they, so we're, you're not really, I don't think you're not, not only are you not helping yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, but you're not solving anything just by arguing and screaming and, and trying to convince everybody to think exactly like you. Start, like you said, start living it. You know, start, what are you doing? Get out in nature every day. Do a better job of recycling. You know, uh, look to get a gas car, you know, uh, all those types of things. There's so many things you can do to make a difference. And then like you spoke of, there's people that are using innovation, you, you know, to, uh, you know, to create clean water for people that don't have it. For uh, even things like, uh, you know, uh, taking seawater and making it where it can be something that, a human can drink, uh, those types of things, new types of recycling. You know, there's a, there's, there is a, a major issue. I am positive though. I'm optimistic. I think like everything else we have overcome as humankind, so many things, even in just the last thousand years. And, and we're going to do this too. The things we, we did were insane. You know, uh, like, like Ford was putting out a, a plane every 15 minutes you know, so we showed that innovation and, and coming together, working together uh, can create a positive thing for humankind. So the same thing can happen with the environment. We, we can do this. But again, just arguing all the time is not going to do it. Yeah. Imagine if, if, if humans could come together when it wasn't a war or a pandemic. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I, think, though, I, and I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't even say that because... Uh, we're having a conversation that's a product of hundreds and thousands of researchers over the years. Like this yeah. conversation is cool. Like I'm in Taiwan, you're in uh, Arizona. That I mean, there's a lot of positive things going on that we take for granted. So I think one Absolutely. of one of the best points that you made um, in in the book, and folks should definitely uh, get the book. It's got tons of uh, uh, points on just you know simple like topically organized things that you can use daily and 
one of, one of my favorite points was to wake up every day and be thankful. And I think that's, that's a mindset that's, it's really hard to, to shake a person into a state of fear and anger when they have a, a state of being thankful yep. for the things they do have. It's impossible, actually. If you really, yeah. and so, yeah, I talk about what are the basics of happiness? Cause people have asked me that. So I put together a simple, I said, number one, you got to have purpose. You got to be doing something that, that really inspires you. Number two, you got to give back to humankind and to the earth on a regular basis. Uh, number three, you got to laugh. You should be laughing every day. Your relation, your house should be full of laughter. Relationships should be fun. Your work should be fun. But the fourth one, and maybe the most important, is to be grateful. If you constantly, uh, like you, you, you're, feeling, you're feeling bad or you're feeling like a victim, and start thinking of things you're grateful for. So that's, it's, it's impossible to truly be grateful and also be angry and mad and pessimistic at the same time. Because as you're, as you're being grateful, I mean, it's, it's much deeper on a spiritual level and an energy level, but even just on a, like a psych, psychology level, when you're being grateful, now you're seeing positive things around you because you're acknowledging them. And then your mind, you're really rewiring your mind. You know, so yeah, uh, every night before I go to bed, I, I th- think about things I'm grateful for. Every morning, I think about it. I get depressed or uh, life's really kicking me. I try to go into the gratefulness, you know. And, and what I'm, and, and my writing and all of my social media, um, you know, I've never uh, tried to modernize my social media. Uh, it's all free. Um, I even had like Twitter contacted me and said, you could be making, you know, like, I don't know, 8,000 a month or something. Um, and I, and the books, I keep them as cheap as possible, as cheap as physically I can get away with, because I'd rather have them in a lot of hands than just make money. So to me, when I'm posting something positive on social media, that's my giving back. I'm helping. And, and while I'm helping, I'm actually healing and helping myself at the same time. Um, so again, when I get depressed, when I get angry, I moved more towards spiritual things. It, 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 I use it as a muse to help me write my way out of my depression. I guess something that I should I should probably start doing um, more of is 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 putting down some of my thoughts in writing. But yeah, I, I appreciate I, I appreciate what you're doing, keep, keeping keeping things affordable and, and not not monetizing them. I had I had a sort of a project you might appreciate. I don't know if you you ever noticed it. it. And I have a question about it in regards to people who are trying to to get the positive messages out and and compete in a in a world that's that's you know social media. It's so driven by fear and and all these emotional yeah. reactive. State. So um, I had a show, it was called Good News Focus, and it, it just I like, it got such little traction that I had to <laughs> step back and say, okay, well, this is taking me a lot of time every week to put this show together. And I've got so many things to do with the, the startup. Um, so I, I ended up shelving it. But what are some of the ways that we can make goodness uh, more attractive so that it could compete with all the, you know, bad signals that we're getting out there? Yeah, like I told you, I have over 150,000 followers on social media, and it was all organically. I just started posting uh, quotes from famous individuals, uh, quotes from my books, and it's a great example of, yeah, there can be a lot of bad stuff on social media, but I am a part of now a huge worldwide community that is positive, that is optimistic. Many other people, people that are searching for spirituality, many great authors, great thinkers, scientists, doctors. I've partnered up with a, uh, uh, Dr. Beth Frades, who is a professor at Harvard Medical School. And we started doing what we called master classes, uh, kind of mind, body, soul. And, and then, the, then the virus hit. So, you know, we were planning on taking it worldwide. And so we're going to do that once things really clear up. But you know, it, it, there, it is out there. there. So when I think of, like, for instance, Twitter now, I think of this beautiful community. 
You know, there's so many people all over the world that think the same way as far as being positive and optimistic and wanting to spread good energy and wanting to uh, tackle the world problems, or even like our relationship now uh, with you. You know, I would have never met you if it wasn't for social media, right? And I do, I don't know, 40, 50 podcasts a year, easily, radio shows, things like that. Almost every one of them came out of a social media connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I told you I spoke in uh, England right before the virus, and that was something that came out of a social media connection. And I met people from all over the world that I'm good friends with now, that I communicate with on a daily basis and things. Uh, uh, A man from Singapore that's doing some outstanding work, you know, Uh, a woman in London that's doing some outstanding work, a woman that's working in sex trafficking uh, in Cyprus, Uh, uh, you know, a woman in Mexico. I mean, all these relationships came out of, you know, and I, I remember when I was still teaching, I was teaching business courses, Twitter had just come out and my students said, what is it? I don't understand it. And I said, and, and, and I wasn't on social media at all at that point. I said, it's, it's viral marketing. That's all it is. Um, and that helped them understand it. And then they all joined way before I did and things like that. I've only been on recently, but that's, that's the idea that that technology it gives us access. And you mentioned this for uh, a few minutes ago. Like even now, you're in Taiwan and I'm in the United States and, and we're communicating, we're talking. And so there is a lot of positive and uh, we're both giving each other energy and giving each other ideas. And, you know, your followers will, will maybe uh, get exposed to a huge part of my followers and vice versa. You know, so that's one way that if you want to stay positive, if you want to stay optimistic, surround yourself with those types of people. Look for people like you that are doing something positive for mankind and the earth. And that just kind of grows exponentially. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to lose sight of, of the, the whole process of things and yeah, to, to kind of only see the bad, like, oh, social media is so bad. It, it really does amplify the, the things that we put into it, though. You know, if, if you click and, and you retweet certain things or whatever, yeah. they're going to probably come back more because of the algorithm. And I, life is like that, too. And but it, it's, it, you know, like we're, we're the product of, of like this gigantic experiment and, and there's, we're kind of sometimes think we get lost in the waves of it and instead yep. of seeing the overall trajectory yep. and uh, it's, it, it's, it's really, really great to, to talk to you about these things and to get this reminder because I was just, just before I talked to you, I was in a, I was really in, in a, in a stressed out mindset. We got a lot of things going on and, um, a lot, of, a lot of battles to be fought in the world, but it's, it's so easy to get lost in them. So I really, well, appreciate- you know, uh, I was also like, oh gosh, another podcast, you know, um, and I, I'm, I'm more choosy now. I, I don't do every one. I do ones that I think people are really doing interesting work. And, and I was the same way, but normally, usually when I, when I get off a podcast, I feel great. You know, um, and it makes me feel good that you feel good. You know, it's, so it's that exchange of energy. And I feel like I've, I've done something worthwhile and I've learned a little bit, you know. So, and I love your, you have some great, great lines. That this is all a big experiment. Uh, I call it the earth experiment. And, the, and, and what humankind are supposed to, is supposed to learn and how they develop uh, it's, it's all a bigger picture. And that's another way to uh, not get tangled up in this, you know, bottom feeding stuff. If you're, if you're constantly thinking big picture, you know, if, think of there. And if you're looking for positive, you're going to find it. If you're looking for negative, you're going to find it. So you get, you get to decide. Happiness is an inside choice. You get to decide no matter what the circumstances, if you're going to be happy or not. Really interesting. I'm sure you're well aware of the, the, the research about like if you smile more it will actually send a signal to your brain that like you're supposed to be happy and it'll release like endorphins and serotonin yep. or whatever and yeah it's, it, it really is a decision that that we can make but you know not to not to downplay all of the very real struggles that we go through because life is not easy at the same time but uh you know, I, I think if anybody out there listening to this right now um, has any any questions, if there's certain struggles that you're going through that 
Um, maybe we didn't cover in this short um, episode that, that you would like to direct to, um, to Gary. Feel free to leave those in the comments and, and I'll make sure those get to him. And it's, it's, it's really been such a pleasure. I know you're a busy guy. You, you had, I, I heard a call come in while we were talking, so I don't want to talk you all day, but um, yeah. it's been such an honor that, that you came on and, and I hope we can have a conversation again. And uh, if, if you have anything to add, feel free though. I and I and I joined your community, so I'm looking forward, uh, you know, on your site to uh, to sh- uh, to seeing what some people are doing. Look like very interesting and fascinating, you know, from that. So I love I love the work you're doing. Well, that's cool to hear that you're on on Nature Hub, and I, I need to spend more time there myself. I'm I'm so busy trying to trying to do other things. I sometimes I don't even get to to spend that much time. And there. I'll tell you, when I was in high school, I had hair just like you. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it, it actually it serves a purpose. You know, I it, it it's a good filter for people because a lot of people <laughs> will look at you and they'll just assume all these things. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like you're doing this this kind of like you're you're probably lazy and smoking pot all the time. Or yeah. I mean, that's at least when I was growing. And up. And in my I mean, time, you were a hippie if you had hair. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't want to say the word, but yeah, people assume all kinds of things. And so <laughs> it, it allows you to sort of like, actually you get a head start on sensing the world around you and how, but based on how people are reacting, it's like, well, yep. I can tell that person's probably judgmental. I'm going to just avoid that. Or, but um, it also is really great for keeping the sun off the neck. So I, I there so you go. <laughs> sorry you don't have that for, for Arizona. If I could still grow it, I probably would. Hopefully you have a big hat or something, but yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. So how can, how can people find out more about what, what you're doing, your books? Um, I know you're doing a master uh, lecture series or, or, or is that still going on somewhat in the, the digital form online or? Um, yeah. I mean, you can go to um, GaryHensel.com. And when I do do like master classes and things, I put notices up there where and when and all that type of stuff. I also have uh all of my books up there and links to them. Um, you can uh, go to Amazon and just Gary Hensel and find my books. They're very, very inexpensive uh, in both electronic format and, um, you know, paperback. Um, I'm also, Twitter's one of my biggest social media, just just happened to happen that way. And that's uh, Gary underscore Hensel. Um, Instagram's the same, Gary underscore Hensel. Facebook, I have uh, author Gary Hensel page up on there. There's an Amazon author page. Uh, uh, YouTube, you can find videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them here in the comment sections, and I will definitely uh, get back to you. Um, and um, I just really appreciate uh, the visit with you today. Yeah, it's been really great talking to you. Everybody go to GaryHensel.com. And um, yeah, in the meantime, uh, focus on the solutions and, uh, and realize the beauty in life. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody on here again and hopefully talking to you again soon. You got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care.